So here's my palette ready for painting, uh, the abstracts I'm going to paint today. So on the palette you'll be able to see up the top the phthalo blue and phthalo blue with some white, the titanium white there, uh, cobalt blue with some white, cobalt blue without white, cadmium red, um, olive green with some white and olive green without white and all mixed with the Zestit cold wax medium as usual. I've also got some additional um, supplies out here which I'm going to use for mark making. So you've got my oil pastels here, um, sort of watercolour pencils or water soluble pencils there, my Derwent ink tents and some pastels. So um, and then some tools here with the brayer, my palette knife and um, some brushes and of course my catalyst wedge. And here's the paper all prepped and you're going to see how I'm going to use that in a moment. Okay, so you can see here that I've laid out the uh, paper and taped it over because I'm going to work on two at the same time in a really abstract way. So for, you know, basically a change from what I've been doing in some of the other videos where I've been very much painting abstract landscapes with an horizon line and you know a foreground and something you know something going on in the distance and quite a bit of uh, sky work this is going to be far more random far more abstract a lot of play uh, not, not much in the way of intention and then we'll see uh, we use different tools different mark making and then we'll see what it looks like when um, it's all uncovered so to start with I'm just going to take one of these um, these water, uh, I think they call water soluble pencils, you know, they get water ac activated. But I'm just going to do a sort of a very loose scribble across the page. Paying, you know, that part is not important. And I'm going to do it in two colours, the blue there and a green, because those are the colours I'm mainly going to be working in. I've also got uh, my oil pastel, so I think I'm going to do some red again very random um it's gonna yeah just see where that takes us don't think oh i may use this one as well um a sort of a jade green effect um there okay i'm gonna i'm gonna put them to one side though, so i've got more room um put those to one side Let's have a look at these intense blocks. I've really, ever since I bought these, I've been doing nothing but oils and cold wax medium, so I've hardly used them. So I've done a lot of scribbles here. So in the interest of variation, I'm going to do a kind of a using the long side of it like that and um, a circle maybe across there, and um, using perhaps a different colour. Let's do some black. I'm going to do some sort of square shape and two lines with crosses through them oh, I've got water somewhere um, I spray some of this some of it will get activated which is quite nice obviously the oil pastels won't but the doing ink tents will and I'm gonna get a big brush and just see where that goes if I just smoosh it <laughs> um, okay yeah that's fine do I want any other color I'm tempted with a red because um, we didn't we use the oil pasta with the, the other red which wouldn't have been water activated but the doing ink tents will and not, not not hugely though but yeah okay we'll just knock that around the place um the other thing i was going to use was some oil pa um, not oil pastels ordinary pastels open it so again sticking with the theme I'm going to maybe do some green just in some areas uh, that yeah that like I like that not that any of this is probably going to show through 
but um, let's just do something different. I always like to do something when I pick up one one tool or one sorry like uh, you know a paint or a crayon whatever I pick up I like to do something different with it than I did with the last move and for some reason I'm getting this real urge to do yellow even though that's not part of what I'm um, using today and I don't know why I'm doing that <laughs> okay so that's just some super random mark making. I mean, I don't think it gets more random than that. <laughs> so let's now apply some oil and cold wax medium. So although I'm not doing a landscape, I sort of wanted landscapey colours. So I've gone for, as you say, the variations of blue and some olive green. So I'm not going to put it down in any way like a landscape. There's going to be no horizon line here. So I'm just going to start applying some colour. So I'm going to go with the um, the olive green first. And I'm just going to apply it in about three different places on each side. Although I'm trying not to think of it in sides. I am trying to think of it as one big thing that's going to look different then when we unveil it. But it is a little hard to think like that. This is the cobalt uh, blue with a bit of white. So I'm going to apply that again. Um, again, I did about three each side. Now I'm going to blend some of this in with my catalyst wedge. I just thinking to myself, if this doesn't work out, I'm not putting this video on, on YouTube. So if you've seen her on YouTube, I'm happy with how it turns out in the end. If you don't, then you're not seeing this and I'm just talking to myself anyway. Um, okay. I'm going to now put in the darker olive green. Um... And again, I'm going to do some blending. I've lost some of the, just not as dark over on this side. I don't know if that matters. I mean, you obviously do need some dark for the contrast. I'm going to just, in for the minute, do a little bit of some squiggles. I meant to do some squiggles before I started, but I forgot. So again, not much in the way of planning with this, just going up and down and around. No, yeah. Taking up some of the pink there. And then I'm going to just very, well, let me clean first, very faintly go over some of this, just blend it in a little. So, knocking back some of the scribbles, but not all of it. And I've gone up down and this is not sticking very well today and the other thing I might do is just bray it a little bit just to see I quite like that effect so I've done that yeah we're going to be going over quite a bit of this still to come but just good to get a bit of texture in there which may or may not show through later on Okay, so let's go back to applying more paint. I'm going to do the cobalt blue. Um, Dad hasn't got the white in it. It's more pure cobalt blue, but obviously with cold wax medium in it. Lovely freshness to that cobalt blue. And I'm gonna just, again, Blend it with the catalyst wedge. And just going with your instincts a lot of the time. Like I just feel this urge to do that. Maybe some sort of sweep because otherwise it can all just be a bit bitty. And I'm trying to get a little bit of um, a flow. But equally it's good. To, like that still feels a little two you know like three different pieces or not even three is them like five different pieces which i don't particularly like 
but equally I don't want it looking too obviously a sweep so it's just trying to think where you want to connect the elements where they need something different this definitely feels like it needs something different there but before we do that let's um actually I think what I just put on there was the phthalo blue with the uh, white this is the cobalt blue without anything yeah that's right there's a danger working with so many blues get confused definitely seem to be doing a better job on the left hand side because that's where I go first um it's weird so again I want this suggestion of landscape but without an horizon line without anything um approaching um clouds but the colors the the feel of it to be somewhat similar or reminiscent in some way so I'm now adding pure fatal blue which you're going to see so rich isn't it I definitely want to break up this bit there um, and I think I'm going to do more scribbles um like there and that really needed it there okay let's wedge let's smooth some of that off again but without taking all the texture away So there's another way of applying paint where you can take some sort of um, sheet. I forget what paper this is. Um, it's not cellophane paper, it's like a tracing paper. I've got a stack of it in my collage stuff. Let me just show you. And you can paint stuff on it and then press it down onto whatever you're working on. And maybe brayer over it and see what comes out so it's just another interesting way of applying the paint and creating in this case i think a little bit more of a uh, unifying some elements of it of the painting where because it was looking quite all different you know sort of areas very distinct areas and I wanted it to have a bit more of a flow <laughs> okay and you can then use the brayer again to to smooth it over why it's not sticking down today it's gone quite a lot of people there as well So I'm going to do all of these, actually should go just straight across like that because that middle bit I'm supposed to be ignoring, you can see I'm not doing a very good job of ignoring it, oh I quite like that, some of these vertical lines coming down, that looks quite interesting and we have some red to go on not a lot and i'm going on this side for a change it's a bit mucky actually i should have uh, cleaned my brush um my brush palette knife first Just do some little swirls, I don't know why, some little like little wave forms. 
again it's all about suggesting elements of the landscape so for me the colors the blues and the greens is part of that this sort of shape which is often the shape i use for clouds to at least when i'm first doing the clouds um as a way of uh, mixing the color in maybe that sort of sweep there that sort of sweep there um the other thing you can do of course is just to, to start scraping back a little bit and see um i don't know if i like that quite like that more I'm not sure I like any of that. <laughs> um, let's go across again. I feel like that is definitely too much there. that is too much there it's when you look you'll sort of see areas which just feel like they lack texture or they're not breaking up enough and then you can keep doing your blending just seeing like it's too much blue there for me and i prefer this side no, again, I'm supposed to be looking at it as one big piece. You can see I'm failing miserably in that. But there's a bit, again, it's lacking in something in terms of texture. So if we... Now, it could be that you just need to come back to it tomorrow. But you know I'm not great at that. I like to see... I hate leaving something where it's just i'm not happy with it even if i'm going to add something the next day i want to at least feel i've left it in a, in a state that i like okay that texture helps i think so again i'm going to just lightly go over it and uh, we'll see it's starting to speak to me now there's something now i'm liking i can already feel the temptation to take to take off the tape just to look at it but do i want to do a bit more white first i think i do so i'm just gonna get a little bit more white and i might do a bit more red as well because that red did come in quite quite dirty looking really it was a bit mucky so, okay, I'm really struggling to get my white out at the moment. I need to start a new, um, let's give up on that and start a new tube. Um, okay. So we've got the white here and let's get the red there. Sorry, this is happening off camera because I haven't got enough room, so just put in white and red on my palette and I'm just gonna mix it with this palette knife and okay when I look and I am now looking a little bit where is it too much blue feels like it's there here where do we need there a little bit of contrast and of course what we haven't got is a dark We've got some of the fatal blue there but it's not potentially not quite enough I'm not sure it doesn't have to be black obviously just something that is contrasting with what we've got so just giving it melanding in a slightly different way just to have a bit of variation now, cleaning this palette knife properly so I don't ruin the red this time. Now, 
I quite like the idea of just dotting that in certain places where they will then track the eye and actually it'll be the red that is our our dark really because it'll be what draws the eye in first and then guides the viewer around the canvas or paper the piece I'm not sure I should have probably left them as dots, I'm not sure. We'll see. They just looks a bit thick to stay as dots. I'm gonna actually use the brayer on these, but I'm gonna use it with some bubble wrap, some big bubble wrap. Oh, yeah. oh, I can't like that. Um. one thing. I'm also going to use some kitchen roll on maybe that bit and that bit. Okay and then I may just go direct. Don't like that line there. come off the, there's a bit of green there that's come off the bubble wrap from my daughter's acrylic painting I'm gonna leave it though another happy accident right I need to get rid of that middle line I got a terrible habit of doing lines in the middle which I really dislike afterwards and it puts me right off the painting I'm trying to stop myself in the act People seems to be buckling today, which is really unusual. I, that doesn't normally happen, and it is creating a kind of <laughs> little lumpiness here. I probably need to. I if I can pull it down a bit. Um. still finding it a little bit too um, disjointed. Try that. And maybe and for some reason the green is not working for me at the moment. I don't like that. But maybe different if I can scribble it out. Again, we'll go across and down and we'll see again have I ruined it I just want to go down. 
just pull some excess off now. Try to kind of unify the piece in some way. I need new kitchen roll. That one's dirty. Um, again, let's do some scribbles. It's got a nice ethereal quality, which I do like, but it needs texture. Just scribbles. And So I think for me, it absolutely needs more white. And again, just to add some more of that texture or contrast, I should say, back in. which is when you lightly glide your palette knife over the white and you, you now get in this sort of really nice effect. As it swoops down. To the red again but I won't over blend it this time just so we get those pops of colour again you know it's very forgiving medium just if you don't like if you've over blended it if you've lost your contrast if you've lost what you were aiming for just go back in and put it in again um, I definitely had lost it. So I'm going to, I like it like this. Um, yeah, I quite like that. Now it's got a kind of a waterfall -y feel to it. But with I don't know, like a sense of flowers falling. Ah, I don't know. I like the, the splash of red. Just hinting at it in some places and being a bit more um, deliberate in others and breaking up the texture just a little and it looks a little too too set or too I don't know artificial okay I quite like that I'm gonna see what they look like I mean my the beauty of this is that I can add more tomorrow when it dries. So it has rocked quite a bit though. I don't know why it's popping up on this today. But let's see. Get 
always having to tangle. Having a real tangle. I'm trying not to ruin the edges as well. Okay, done. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm still even within the camera. <laughs> oh, yeah, sort of. Um, okay, oh, they look so pretty. So I've taken the camera out of the tripod so that I could show you how they're looking. I'm really pleased with them. I think they have got an ethereal uh, nature, landscape quality, very much waterfall-y. Um, and I think those pops of red really add to it. So yeah, pleased with them.